Listening Test. This test is published and recorded by 9.0 Niner English. This recording is copyright. You will have to respond to questions based on the recordings you will hear. You will be given the chance to read the directions and questions, and you will be given time to check your answers. You are allowed to listen to each section once only. Four sections make up the test. You will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet after the test. Now, listen to the first section. Listening Test 2. Easy. Section 1. Part 1. You will hear a telephone conversation between the hostess of a restaurant and a customer trying to make a reservation. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Hello, is this the Wild Thyme restaurant? Yes, it is. How may I help you? Oh, I would like to inquire if it would be possible to book a section of the restaurant for a birthday party for the evening of the 24th of May. Yes, we do offer private dining rooms to our clients, but you will have to pay extra for that. OK, that won't be a problem. Right. Let me check the availability for that evening. Ah, here we go. Our North and South dining rooms are available for reservation on the 24th. And how much would that cost, including the meals? Well, it depends. How many people are in your party? It's going to be a small celebration with just some family and friends, so I am expecting around 25 guests, including me. But my friends, Tim and Sarah, did say that they wouldn't be able to come back to town in time for my birthday, so I guess that brings it down to 23 people. For a party that many, I wouldn't recommend the North Dining Room, since it's meant for larger parties with 50 seated guests. Instead, you could choose the South Dining Room, which is intended for smaller parties and costs less compared to the other. That sounds great. I'd like to book it from 6 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. How much would that be? Let's see. The 24th of May is on a Saturday. So the weekend price for the duration you want would be £90. It's only £65 on weekdays. Oh, that's fine. Since we charge £40 per guest for a three-course meal, that will bring your total to around £1,010. About that. Can you tell me a bit more about your menu? Sure. We have two set menus for the evenings that our diners can choose from, both inclusive of an appetizer, entree and dessert. Is one of those set menus free from shellfish and nuts? Shellfish and nuts? Yes, I can't eat anything with those ingredients, or else I get a really bad allergic reaction. All right, hmm. Let me see. Ah, yes, we do serve dishes without shellfish. Our first set consists of pan-seared duck breast for appetizer and a rosemary seasoned rack of lamb with a rich bordelais sauce for the entry. For the dessert, you have the option to get the chocolate mousse cake instead of the hazelnut d'acquois. Well, that's a relief. All right. And are there any other inclusions that I should know about? Yes, our dinner menu includes complimentary still of sparkling water and a delicious homemade bread. Oh, and if you want, we can also decorate the section for you, free of charge. That would be lovely. Thank you. OK, can I have your name, please? Sure. My name is Dylan Smith. Is that spelled with a Y? No, it's actually D-I-L-L-O-N. Great. We have reserved the South Dining Room for 23 people on May 24th, Saturday at 6 p.m. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. That is the end of part one. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers.
Section 2, Part 2. You will hear a safari guide talking to a group of people who are on a tour of the zoo. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Hello explorers and welcome to the National Zoo's Safari Drive Tour. My name is Steve and I'll be a safari guide for today. Before we embark on this exciting adventure, let me start off by giving a few reminders on the rules of the tour. Rule number one, for your own safety and for everyone else involved, please remain in the vehicle at all times during the tour. This is also to pay respect to the animals and their habitats. For rule number two, we must avoid scaring the animals. In order to do that, noise should be kept to a minimum. So, we ask that you please put all your phones on silent and avoid shouting during the duration of the tour. And rule number three, smoking is strictly prohibited as our zoo remains a non-smoking property. Lastly, and most importantly, have fun and take lots of pictures along the way. Okay, that is it for the rules of the road. Now that we're all set, buckle up and we shall begin our wild adventure. All right, explorers, we are currently entering the Indo-Malaya realm of this tour, home to the endangered Sumatran tiger, which you can find on your left. And fortunately, there are only approximately less than 400 Sumatran tigers worldwide, which is why the National Zoo is taking an active role in fighting the extinction of these magnificent creatures. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now, listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Up ahead, to your right, catch a glimpse of another endangered animal, the rare one-horned rhinoceros. These large creatures inhabit the marshy lands of Assam and West Bengal and are easily identified by their armoured look and signature one horn. As we come to the end of the bridge, we enter the realm of the African savannah. Look over there. Do you notice a head peeking out from just around a bend? That would be our long-legged and long-necked friend, otherwise known as the tallest mammal on land, the glorious giraffe. By nature, giraffes are friendly and social animals. They use their long necks to watch out for any nearby predators and alert other herd members of danger. It's also quite useful for munching on tree leaves, don't you think? They're often found in both semi-arid savannas and savanna woodlands. As we continue to delve deeper into the African savannah, keep your eyes peeled for other animals. Can you see any of them? Well, to the right, in the distance, rests another species of rhinoceros. Ah, there they are! The white rhinoceros! If you look closely, you can tell a big difference from the first rhinoceros we've seen. Unlike the one-horned rhinoceros, this species has two horns and can be found in both long and short grass savannas in Africa. Close to the white rhinoceros' enclosure, watch for the plains zebras. These four-legged creatures may seem like horses, but they have black fur with white stripes and mostly white bellies. These stripes are actually as distinct as fingerprints are to humans. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it is also a known fact that this specific species of zebra tends to live in the treeless grasslands of eastern and southern Africa. All right, moving on to your far left. You might not notice them yet, but if you look closely, you might chance upon the fastest mammal on land, the cheetah. 
They normally prefer to live in open grasslands, but can also survive in a range of habitats across eastern and southern Africa. These agile hunters have a spotted coat that blends with the tall, dry grass of the African plains, making them seemingly invisible to prey such as wildebeest, gazelles and antelopes. Here comes the exciting part. Brace yourselves, brave explorers, as we enter the cave of the king of the jungle, the mighty lion. They have strong, solid bodies and powerful forelegs and jaws for killing prey. And did you know that they are the only known cat species that live in groups? They live and travel in groups called pride and prefer to inhabit grassland, dense scrub and open woodlands. Right, as we continue on our journey and look to the left, you might find one of our spotted hyenas. These animals have large heads, muscular necks and powerful jaws that make them the ninth mammal with the strongest bite in the animal kingdom. They live in large groups called clans and are led by females instead of males. Clans of spotted hyenas often live in mountainous areas, woodlands and even semi-deserts. On your right hand side, we have the largest mammal on land. Can you guess what it is? Right, it's the large elephant, specifically the African bush elephant. Of all three elephant species, the African bush elephant is the largest. They have a highly dexterous trunk, long curved tusks and massive ears. These gentle giants live in diverse habitats such as savannas and even some forests and deserts. That is the end of part 2. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Section 3, Part 3. You will hear a conversation between two classmates called Sam and Alex about their topic for next week's presentation. First, you will have some time to look at questions 21 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 30. Hey Sam, have you prepared your presentation for next week's class? Oh hi Alex. Yes, I've already finished it the other day. That's great. I wish I worked as fast as you. I'm still struggling to find an interesting idea for my report. But what topic did you choose to go with? Well, I decided to go with the cultural significance of different Indian festivals. Indian festivals? What made you decide to choose that topic? Actually, I've always been intrigued by Indian culture, and I thought it would be a great topic to work on for my presentation since it's something I'm actually interested in. I guess that's a good reason. Hmm, I'm quite interested to hear about your report as well. Really? Do you mind listening to my presentation right now? I could definitely use the practice. I'll listen to yours too once you finish it. Oh, all right. Go on then. So tell me, what are some of the famous Indian festivals? Well, since India is a highly religious country, they celebrate a number of festivals to honour the gods that they worship. Take for example the Holi Festival, or sometimes referred to as the Festival of Colours, which celebrates a triumph of good over evil, and the destruction of the demon as Holika. On the second day of this festival, a perfume powder called Gulal is thrown at everyone creating a colourful display on one's body. That sounds fun. And do the colours mean anything, or are they only pelting random colours at each other? From what I've learned, 
the different colors of gola powder signify specific things. Red is believed to represent love and fertility. Yellow is turmeric. Green is spring. And new beginnings. And blue for the Hindu god Krishna. That makes more sense compared to just throwing any color at each other. That's true. There are also other well-known Indian festivals. Another example would be the amazing Ganesh festival that honors the birth of the Hindu elephant-headed god of beginnings, Lord Ganesh. During the festival, it's common to come across beautiful statues of Ganesh placed in homes and public places. These statues are worshipped throughout the course of this 11-day festival before being walked through the streets and eventually submerged in the ocean. Hold on a second. I'm a bit confused. Why would they submerge the statues of their god in water? It's part of the ritual that they perform to signify the birth cycle of Lord Ganesh. It's thought that after he's immersed in water, he will return to his original home. Oh, I see. And what about other festivals? They also celebrate Diwali, which is India's most important holiday of the year. Some refer to it as the Festival of Lights, as it honours the victory of brightness over darkness. Is this festival also associated with one of their gods? Yes, it is. Diwali is said to be done to celebrate Lakshmi, the Hindu goddess of wealth and good fortune. Ah, I understand. So, what exactly happens during the Festival of Lights? Similar to other festivals, they celebrate this one with a lot of sweets, family gathering, and the light of clay lamps that signify the light that protects each household from spiritual darkness. However, each day of this five-day celebration has its own importance. The third day is perceived to be the most significant, as this is the day that devotees visit the temple to honor Lakshmi. From what I've heard so far, it's clear that the Indians really value and respect their gods. They even celebrate festivals that last for several days in their honor. They really do. It's remarkable how devoted they are to their gods and their cultural beliefs. They even have festivals that commemorate the birthday of one of their gods. Well, they do. And whose birthday would that be? It's the Hindu god Krishna's birthday. It's actually a really fun festival. As part of this festival, groups of males will climb on top of each other to create a human pyramid in an attempt to reach and break clay pots full of curds that have been tied up from the buildings. They refer to this activity as Dai Handi. As entertaining as that sounds, I don't think I would ever be able to successfully do something like that without hurting myself. Don't worry. I don't think we have any festivals that would require you to do something like that anytime soon. But jokes aside, isn't this interesting to learn about this part of Indian culture? Yes, it really is interesting after all. I knew you would enjoy it. Well, thank you for all the information that I learned today. I know for certain you'll do a good job for the presentation next week. I hope that I'll also be able to decide on a topic for my presentation soon. Don't worry, Alex. I know you will. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Section 4. Part 4. You will hear a marine biologist giving a lecture on the Greenland shark. First, you will have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. 
During our last meeting, we began a discussion on deep sea creatures such as the humpback anglerfish, pelican eel, and frilled shark. Today I'd like for us to talk about another shark that lives deep in the depths of the ocean and is considered one of the most peculiar of its species, the Greenland shark. Below the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, just off the coast of Greenland, this mysterious predator prowls on the frigid Arctic waters. The Greenland shark, a member of the sleeper shark family, is the vertebrate known to have the longest lifespan. It was previously assumed that the bowhead whale was the oldest living vertebrae at 211 years. However, in 2016, a group of scientists discovered a Greenland shark that was estimated to be up to 500 years old. Although it is notoriously hard to determine the actual age of sharks, the scientists were able to come up with an estimation through the process of radiocarbon dating isotopes with its eye lens nuclei. The discovery of Greenland sharks has mystified scientists all over the world, begging the question of what makes these Arctic dwelling creatures live so long. Initially, it was thought that the diet might be a factor in the prolonged lifespan. Later on, it was discovered that these sharks do not have a particularly healthy diet that can be linked to a longer life. Thorough dissections of these sharks have determined that they typically consume marine creatures like smaller fish and seals. However, these sharks are primarily scavengers and have no problem eating larger animals that have died and sunk to the bottom of the ocean, which explains some of the stranger things that have been found in their stomach contents, such as polar bears, moose and reindeers. Similar to killer whales, Greenland sharks have no natural predators, which is definitely beneficial when trying to stay alive. The reason why predators avoid them might be because of their toxic flesh. Greenland sharks have high levels of urea, high enough that if ingested, it would kill most animals. Additionally, they also have high levels of a chemical called trimethylamine oxide, or TMA which is an ammonia-like chemical compound that acts like antifreeze, preventing fatal ice crystals from forming in the shark cells. This effectively allows them to swim in extremely cold waters and still function well. However, the lack of predators still does not answer why this large being can live for several centuries. Shifting perspectives, scientists decided to take into consideration the habitat of these mysterious sharks known to be the largest fish in the Arctic Ocean. They can also be found in the North Atlantic and Russian High Arctic. However, Greenland sharks are rarely seen from the surface because they tend to dive to extreme depths, going as deep as 7,218 feet. It became apparent early on that the Greenland shark is the only shark species they can tolerate the freezing temperatures of Arctic waters all year long. While observing them in their natural habitat, scientists discovered the effects of the chilly weathers on these large sharks. In order to conserve energy in the freezing cold, Greenland sharks swim at an extremely slow pace at only 1.12 feet per second, making them one of the slowest fish in the sea. Another observation made by scientists was that, similar to most animals, the metabolism of Greenland sharks slows down in cold temperatures, which subsequently slows down their heart rate as well. This is why their heart beats only five times per minute. There is a relationship between heart rate and longevity. Species that have slower heart rates tend to live longer than those with faster heart rates. Despite this discovery, scientists still weren't convinced that low metabolisms and slow hearts were what made them stay alive for centuries more than any other vertebrate. In 2017, a team of scientists journeyed to the Arctic to study a Greenland shark up close. They were surprised by the sheer size of its heart, approximating it to be four times larger the size of a human heart. They also discovered that despite its heart's large size and having lived for so long, 
there were no indications of any heart problems one might suffer from in old age. The findings suggest that, unlike a human heart, a Greenland shark's heart is able to regenerate by constantly growing new cells. That is the end of the recording. You now have 30 seconds to review your work. That is the end of your exam. You are now given 10 minutes to check and transfer your answers to the answer sheet.